Hi, in this tutorial I'll be deriving the range equation and sharing information about when it's appropriate to use it uh, and kind of what the conditions are, uh, what you should be thinking about before you use it. Um, let's start off by ma just making a quick sketch. I've got some object, could be a, a ball or anything, that's being uh, booted uh, or it's got some initial velocity in, in both the horizontal and the vertical direction. We know the path of the uh, trajectory is going to look something like this. The most important thing to recognize is that the initial y position, whatever it is, we can define it as equal to zero or not zero, but whatever the whatever we define as that plane is going to be equal to the final y position whatever you've called it the uh, vertical displacement or delta y is going to be equal to zero so the difference between where it starts and where it ends uh, has to be uh, equal to zero and so we say then that the range equation is appropriate for use uh, when we're talking about a uh, level uh, range or um, in other words, the initial and the final y positions are equal to zero. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, go through the derivation. The first thing that we should recognize is that uh, whatever this velocity v is can be resolved into its x and y components. We know that the x component uh, or the horizontal component of the velocity vector is going to be v times the cosine of the angle theta. This is stuff we've been working on in class. Also, the y component of velocity is going to be v, uh, or the magnitude of the velocity vector, times the sine of the angle theta. Both of these also are the initial uh, velocity components. And we'll see, of course, that the y component changes. I'll put a little asterisk here. The y component uh, of velocity changes over time. And the x component, because it is uniform, uh, does not change over time. Let's go ahead and take a look at our equations in the horizontal. Um, we can basically say that the velocity v is equal to the horizontal displacement over the time interval. This is really just the vector form of distance over time. And in the vertical uh, plane, I'll basically start with the first equation of kinematics. I'll say that my final y position is equal to my initial y position plus my initial velocity in the y direction times time plus one half at squared. What I'm going to do is go ahead and rearrange this equation in uh, the vertical dimension so that I get delta y. All I've done is subtract y naught from both sides. I get uh, delta y is equal to v o y t plus one half at squared. Recognizing that delta y is equal to zero, we've established that here. Uh, again, if that's not true, then you can't use the range equation. But let's go ahead and say that in this particular case it's true, and therefore I have 0 on the left side is equal to VOYT plus 1 half AT squared. Subtracting VOYT from both sides, I get negative VOYT is equal to 1 half AT squared. I can divide both sides by t that el eliminates one t on the left and one of the two t's on the right. Rearranging the equation, again, multiplying both sides by two and dividing by a, I'm going to get negative two v o y over a is equal to t. Now, I'm going to make one adjustment to this. This is something you've seen before over here on the um, vertical um, uh, dimension. And what I'm going to do is basically substitute in a g uh, for a. So let me go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is take this g and plug it in for a. And we know that g eventually we're going to be plugging in as negative 9.8 meters per second per second. And therefore, since we know we're going to be putting in a negative here, let's go ahead and, and get rid of that negative uh, and just switch that to a positive so that when we do plug in g in the denominator we'll just put in the 9.8 knowing that we've already dealt with the negative sign up here uh, this is the convention you know you don't have to do that but uh, the way that we're gonna derive this equation we will so ultimately what this becomes then is 2 v o y over g is equal to t. Notice we've just basically dumped this negative sign because we know that g is in the negative direction. So when we plug in g, it'll be 9.8. OK, uh, now what I'm going to do is ultimately take, uh, take this value for t and substitute it in, uh, the, uh, in for t over here in the uh, horizontal dimension. Rearranging that equation, 
I get, uh, and I should be careful here, this is the x uh, component of velocity. I should say that the x component of velocity is equal to my horizontal displacement, or delta x, divided by 2 v o y. And notice that I'm going to put g over here in the numerator. Uh, I'm basically, uh, uh, this is a complex fraction, and so algebraically I can handle it this way. Now I'm going to solve uh, for delta x. I'm going to move everything uh, here in the denominator over to the other side, and I'm going to get 2 times vx times voy, and uh, all of that is going to be over g, and that's going to be equal to my range or my horizontal displacement. Now what I need to do is uh, go back over here and take a look at these guys and I should recognize that I have my uh, resolved components uh, for x and y and ultimately I'm going to be putting those in over here for vo and uh, vx. So let me uh, pan down a little bit on this here on the page and so now what I get is something that looks like this. I get 2 times v cosine theta times v sine theta all over g is equal to delta x or my range. That's just another way of writing it and I will this time. The range or the idea of uh, using r as range is the same or it's equivalent to my horizontal displacement. Uh, taking it one step further, now I'm going to get um, v squared, I'm just combining like terms, times 2 uh, sine theta cosine theta all over g is equal to uh, my range r. And, uh, you know, not everybody's going to remember this from uh, some sort of a, a, a class, a trig class that they've, that they've taken recently. Uh, so um, what I'm going to do is highlight this little box over here in red. There is a trig identity, um, which again you may or may not recall, where 2 sine theta cosine theta is equal to the sine of twice theta. It's called a double angle formula, I think. So if uh, I substitute that in here, so if I take this relationship here and plug it in over here, it kind of just gives me an additional simplification, and I get v squared times the sine of twice theta all over g is equal to my range. Now there's a couple of important things to see here. First of all, what I'm highlighting here or boxing in in blue is a really important idea. This is called the range equation. And it'll be given to you on uh, tests and quizzes and other assessments. But you should recognize that the value for v is the actual magnitude of the vector velocity. It's not resolved into the x and the y components. So this is the one exception to that rule where you'll actually resolve things into their x and y pieces. Uh, where, where, I'm sorry, you won't resolve them into their x and y pieces. Also, uh, let's say that that angle was uh, 30 degrees, so, you know, uh, 20 meters per second at 30 degrees. You're going to take uh, 20 meters per second, plug it in for v and square it, and then takes the sine of twice 30, or that becomes the sine of 60 degrees, all over 9.8. So uh, use this range equation wisely. Again, uh, making note that when you go up here, some of the um, and you take a look at this sketch, everything was based on this premise that we were firing on a uh, level horizontal range, and that the initial position was equal to the final position here. If that is the case, then you can break out the range equation and save yourself a bunch of work. Uh, v squared sine two theta over g is equal to r.